everyone, Chris Gamble of Chris Gamble's Analog Life here. And I was working on some circuits today and got to a rough spot, so I thought I'd take a break and talk about resumes. Resumes don't really mix with circuits usually, but I thought I'd talk about them anyways. I'm going through a job change right now, and I, my old job I used to look at a lot of resumes. And one of my friends is looking at a job change too, so I was, you know, talking to him about resumes and looking at my own resume. And, and previously I looked at students' resumes for um, internship positions. So I have a lot of opinions just on what I like to see at least. I mean, your mileage may vary on what an employer might like or what a lot of search firms look for. But I thought I'd go over what I think should be in an electronics resume. So first off, let's talk about resumes themselves. What the heck are they? They're basically a way to try and show what you've done. And if you can't do like uh, my buddy Dave from the EV blog Hi. likes to do, which is bring a circuit to an interview, if you need to show someone what you can do before that, usually it's done with a resume. So usually it's a listing of where you've worked, what you've worked on, maybe where you've gone to school, if you've gone to school for you know the, the job you're applying for. But basically, the idea was to, initially at least, to put all your experience down in one place and collect it. Now over the years, it's gotten kind of messed up. It's gotten very institutionalized, and companies look for very specific things, to the point where even big companies now throw your digitized resume into a database, and they crunch on it. They use, uh, you know, a lot of different programs to do keyword searching and all that other junk. But, aside from that, assuming you're just giving it to a human being, which is the best case, um, let's go over what should be on it. So I'm going to present two resumes here. here this is the first. This is a, an engineering student who's looking for an internship position, just because that's the experience I have uh, in terms of reading resumes. But this is the bad version. Then we're also going to look at a, a better version later. So to start with looking at the objective statement. This you see on a lot of different resumes, but it's not necessarily uh, a good thing. I mean, it, it doesn't say much. It doesn't really give any useful information. Next, we're looking at education, and you can see that they have their college and their high school stuff here, but really too much information. I mean, and even if you're an a engineering intern, uh, you're looking for an internship, you don't need this much information and definitely not this much resolution on a grade point average for sure. Uh, that's kind of ridiculous. So definitely pare that down. You don't need that unless, you know, you've got nothing else, but I'll, I'll show you later what, what was a better way of doing that. The skills section is something that I look at uh, the most, and this one is actually really sparse on that. I mean, it shows some software programs, not really necessarily relevant for a circuits position, but I'll show you how you can make that relevant later. But th the main thing is that I want to see skills the most, and that's kind of what we've seen the least here. The experience section is really meant for engineers that have been in industry for a while. It's kind of tough because college offices will tell you, well, you should put anything on there to show you responsible. I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah, you could put your job down, but you don't need half the page like I've seen before where it's you know three different summer jobs. That's not necessarily relevant. I want to see stuff that is relevant to electronics, so I would shorten this section up, to be honest. So finally, we get down to the bottom of this resume, and there's activities and there's interests. But again, what there's not is relevance. Sure, the IEEE student membership is good, but you could do that without any effort at all. And then putting your interests down, you might be able to strike up a conversation, but there's no real purpose towards electronics. So that's what I would really be looking for. So now we're on to the better version that I mentioned earlier. Same guy, same basic everything, uh, just written differently. Written that shows in a way that shows that you're interested in electronics and interested in learning. It doesn't matter if you don't have the, you know, tons of experience. I just want to, you need to get across somehow that you want to learn more and that you actually enjoy what you're doing. So we're doing things a little differently here. Uh, this, in this case, it's a summary instead of an objective statement. Yeah, what's the difference, right? The main thing is I want you to be conversational in this way. I want you to show how you're interested in electronics, that you're passionate about doing some work. Because if I'm trying to hire you, I need to know that six months in, when things are going rough, that you're still going to be interested. In this case, this person's saying, well, I want to work in the aerospace industry because I want to work for NASA someday. And that's pretty cool. The education stuff is different now, but it gets the point across. It's a lot shorter, it's a lot more to the point, and that's all I need to see. Again, because this is an internship uh, resume, now I've added in courses, which there weren't before. Not only the courses, but what you like about them. Show what you want to work on, and show what you like working on or that you've done so far. So now we're at software skills, and on the other resume, we had this also, but we're just getting a little bit more detail. Now we're actually showing, well, what it, not just what we like about it or what we've done, but what we've actually used it for. And that also gives you some relevance, you know, when you're trying to talk to an employer, why you should hire me. Well, I've done this and this and this. Other skills, so 
you know, you're working on electronics, you, you know how to solder. That's a good thing to mention. Don't be afraid to mention some of the mundane things that you think everyone should know because sometimes that's not the case. Uh, be sure to be specific. The intersection of a resume is actually what I read first these days. Um, you know, on this other resume, the person had, you know, ping pong, gaming, ga cooking, baseball, whatever, right? But that doesn't really show interest in electronics outside of work or school or, or whatever it might be. Those are the people I'm really looking for. So if you're with a hacker space or, you know, you're building gaming controllers or you're building a sous vide with an Arduino, it doesn't matter to me. It just shows that you're passionate and you care so that when times are tough, like I said before, you're going to stick with it. So that's really what I'm looking for there. And finally, down to the experience section, you know, it's not relevant. So I tried to dress up a little bit, but if you can't, don't worry about it. Just make it a smaller section of your resume, show that you've worked and move on. So these are just some of the fake resumes I made up. Obviously, you're going to have a lot of different things on there. Maybe you're not even uh, a student. Maybe you're looking for full time. But the thing is, and the thing that I said while we were going over this, is you got to get across not only what you've done, but that you're interested. In terms of people I've wanted to hire before, I've obviously only hired interns before. But I've only wanted to hire interns that are interested or want to learn. And it's tough to get it across in a resume. Now, the thing that I will say is, don't lie. If you lie, you're going to be caught because eventually someone's going to be like, oh, well, you worked on a sous vide cooker with an Arduino. Okay, what was that like? And then when you start stumbling over yourself, it's, it's going to be very obvious. Another thing, if you don't have the experience, say you don't even have enough, so you've never held a job because you've been taking summer courses or say you don't know a lot of software stuff, what then? Should you just leave it blank? Well. That is an option. Uh, I mean, truthfulness over anything else. My suggestion would be go out and learn these things. I mean, if you're trying to get a job in electronics, you should be interested in trying out electronics. I understand that electronics labs are not cheap. You know, like a lot of this stuff, it costs it costs me some money. But there's a lot of great resources out there in order to try out electronics cheaply. I mean, you could solder together kits. Soldering irons are less than $25 sometimes. Uh, you can get a, a, decent, a really nice soldering iron for about $50 to $80, anywhere in there. Uh, if you have any proficiency on eBay, you can get cheap old equipment and try and fix it up on your own time. I mean, that that's another great way to try and stock up your lab. And there's tons of tutorials out there on how to build up labs and, and how to build kits. And, and even if you're just trying out a 9-volt battery, a resistor, and an LED, you're learning, right? That's, that's the important thing. And that's something that you can put down on a resume. People that aren't students... A lot of the same things apply. I mean, if you've even if you've worked at a, an electronics company for 10 years and you're looking for a new job, there's a lot of stuff that you can put on resumes that uh, doesn't really show that you're interested in electronics so much as that you've worked in electronics. And I would always say that you should try and show that you're interested still. I mean, 10 years on, you should still be interested, right? So show off the good things you've done, uh, but also maybe still put those hobby projects on there. Maybe still... Talk about the, th the things that you've enjoyed at your current job and what you want to keep doing because that should really help you narrow your search. Another thing that I really like, like to see on resumes in terms of when I've interviewed coworkers is really specific things. So if you've you know, worked on high voltage, how high a voltage have you worked on? If you've worked on low current, how low of current have you worked on? The, those are kind of the wow factor things that, that I like to see as an electronics person. I want to see that you've you know, measured femtoamps before, you know how to do those circuits, or that you have done a gigahertz uh, board layout, that kind of thing. These are, those are the impressive things that I'll be like, wow. And hopefully that, um, you know, then I also see, oh, well, you worked on, you know, vintage pianos and, you know, you like, you like uh, the electronics and vintage pianos, that kind of thing. So uh, obviously I'm using one of my own ex examples here, but I don't really have the other ones. So. <laughs> so resumes, you know, they're definitely an imperfect thing. They're, they're not an easy way to get a point across, but... Um, if you can, you know, try and show off what you've done. Try and show off what you're interested in. If you have online stuff, if you have, if you documented your project somewhere else, show that too. Uh, but whatever you do, try and try and get across that you're passionate about electronics. Try and show that you're you want to work on cool problems, and I think you'll be fine.